what happens when a gravitational wave crosses the Earth. To investigate it, let's place four stones on the ground in form of a square. Make sure that each side is one meter long. Then, wait for a gravitational wave. When one is passing by, quickly measure the sides of the square. You will notice that one of them is longer than one meter, while the other is shorter. Like other effects of general relativity, a gravitational wave is about curved spacetime, and so it is unintuitive and hard to visualize. In a nutshell, a passing gravitational wave creates space in one direction and destroys space in the other direction. The vertices of the square do not really move, it's just that space is being uniformly added between them and so they find themselves further apart. Or the space between them is being uniformly removed and so they find themselves closer than before. Once the gravitational wave passes, everything returns to normal. As you probably know, things are made of atoms. In solids, atoms are usually arranged in a lattice. The distance between atoms is determined by their electromagnetic interactions. If they get too close, they repel. If they get further apart, they attract. Unless, of course, you pull them too far and the material breaks. This is why things can be squeezed or stretched. Some materials are more elastic than others because they have more tolerance for squeezing and stretching. When a gravitational wave passes by, the atoms find themselves further apart in one direction, but closer in the other. The same thing would happen if the material was squeezed and stretched. This is why we say that a passing gravitational wave squeezes and stretches things out. The difference is that in the actual squeezing and stretching we move atoms by applying force. A gravitational wave changes the distance by creating and destroying space rather than applying force. However, in both cases, the atoms of the material exert similar forces on each other. To be specific, a passing gravitational wave squeezes and stretches things perpendicular to its direction of motion, and the squeezing and stretching alternates as the wave passes by. Detecting gravitational waves is difficult. Not only the distances between the stones of our square get distorted, but also distances between the atoms of the ruler we use get squeezed and stretched. So, as a gravitational wave passes by, the ruler, which is supposed to be one meter long, also changes its length. In principle, you could detect a passing gravitational wave by attaching a piece of inelastic material to a larger piece of elastic material. A passing gravitational wave would squeeze both of them, but the piece of inelastic material would more quickly return to its original shape, moving relatively to the elastic material. Such movement would indicate a passing gravitational wave. This, however, is impractical, because gravitational waves we experience are not strong enough to be detected in this way. Instead, we use light. Light has always the same speed. When we send two light beams along sides of a square, they return in the same amount of time. But if the square is deformed by a passing gravitational wave, one of the light beams returns quicker. This is essentially how LIGO works. Thank you for watching.